today's live stream. Um, the show doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't really have a name. I keep putting quilts and chips because, um, I don't know. I think that sounds pretty good. We look at quilts and quilt stuff. I eat chips. I know a lot of other people eat chips too. Um, uh, I think I'm one minute early. So, so who knows what's going to happen and who's going to come by today. Hopefully you'll come by. Hopefully if you're seeing this, you'll, you're, you know that you're, you're here, you know. So, um, so thanks for coming and say hi in the chat if you, uh, when you get here. Um, yeah. So, okay. So I'm getting things ready here because, um, <laughs> because I, you know, I have to tell you a story. My story is a sad one. It's sad. Um, I, I don't feel great. I mean, physically, you know? Um, and the reason I don't feel great physically is, I mean, it's a silly reason, you know? Uh, but it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of rough. I was out doing errands today and, um, I took a shortcut through, uh, <laughs> through, sorry, hang on, hang on, working on this, working on this, hang on. Um, so I took a shortcut through this department store and, okay, it's just now 501. I'm going to wait on the story until the peeps come in. I know they're coming in. They're coming in. <laughs> Someone's here. Someone's here. Uh, okay, for the person who's in here, can you... I mean, you can surely hear that, right? Like, can you hear that? Is it really bad, that, like, helicopter? <laughs> if, if it is, let me know, okay? Because it's, pr it's pretty loud for me. Um, there is a, uh, a climate... Um, protests going on. They've been really, really big, um, the protests right now in London. Yesterday they shut down London Bridge and today they've shut down, um, uh, uh, no, yesterday they shut down Tower Bridge and today they've shut down, uh, London Bridge. So that's a lot of bridges to, to shut down. Uh, and they're really, they're really, yeah, I mean, there's tons of people out there and it's interesting. I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of protesting here in London since we got here. There's been, um, yeah, there's been anti-vax protests. There's been um, anti-lockdown protests. There's been uh, whew, a lot of different things. What else have I seen? Well, then the climate change people. So it, yeah, there's been there's been quite a few like times when you couldn't get from one place to another. Um, so anyway, so I yeah, I'm feeling a little bit a little bit blah because um, I took a shortcut through this department store because I was doing errands and then I, I needed to get home to do the setup for this. And I took a shortcut through Selfridges, which is enormous. And I stopped at a perfume counter. Okay, I did. And I got sprayed. I got sprayed. Hey, Amy. Hey, so Viv. Hi, hi. I've got to tell you my, st my story. Whoa. I mean, I don't feel good. I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better, but, um, I, I took a sh shortcut through a department store to get home because my errands were just taking me a long time and I'm still learning. Hey, Carol. Hi. Um, did you have a good birthday? I hope so. Um, uh, I took a shortcut. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm still learning my way around London. I mean, I've got... It's cool. Like, I can put together a few different things. Hey! I know who that is. That's Eric. Hey, honey. Honey, I don't feel good, and I'll tell you why. So I took a shortcut, and this... And the perfume counter... I mean, the, in Selfridges, it's like... It's the perfume... Basically, like, the perfume floor. Has anyone been to Selfridges, the department store? in um, London. I mean, it's huge. It's not quite as big as Harrods, but it's really big. It was funny. The first time I was there, I asked this woman, I was like, uh, could you tell me, um, is the, are these all the handbags you have? Cause it was like Gucci and like Chanel. I mean, pff, 
I mean, th th those handbags are like five thousand dollars, you know, a piece. So I was like, "Do you do you have other other handbags?" And she was like, "Oh yes, this whole floor is handbags." I was like, "Oh okay." Uh, so could you point me to the ones that maybe you know I could afford? Hey, Marianne. Hey, HPX Stitch, Canada, Canada in the house. <laughs> um, Eric, have you been to Selfridges? So, well, I think you should go to Selfridges all the time as long as you take me, darling. So, so I stopped at the perfume counter. I am in the market for some perfume. I don't have any here. So I, I got sprayed. It's like, you know, a cat or something just sprayed me, but, or a skunk. Um, I got sprayed. I tried one perfume, you know, here of my own, you know, that was my choice. And then the woman who saw me doing that, you know, said, oh, try this one. And she put on some on the other hand. And then I was like, oh, I really like that one. And she's like, just try some on. And I was like, uh, okay. And I sprayed, hey, Natalie, hi. I'm telling you why I don't feel good. I'm feeling a lot better, actually. I mean, this is how I feel in this very moment is the best I've felt for a couple hours. Smells, I really am sensitive to smells, man. And when it's a, when it's like, oh, see, now I'm gonna feel bad again. When it's like a powdery, when it's a real, you know, powdery perfume, I mean, I just get nauseated. I really feel like dizzy and like, ugh, like my head sort of, I just feel really bad. And so, so I couldn't get the, the smell off my hands. And, and, and then I was like, I was washing my hands. I, I don't want to smell my hands again because if it's still there, yeah, I won't feel, you know, I'm like, ah. But I, I kept washing my hands. It was like, it was like, like Macbeth, you know, Lady Macbeth. I was like, out, out, damn spot. And I couldn't, I couldn't get it off. It's like really, you know, I guess that perfume really stays on because I couldn't get it off. And then I was like, oh, I sprayed it on my neck. So I like washed my neck and I have my hair back because uh, <laughs> I have to get it away from me. But I washed and washed and it's still, and I used like dish soap, you know, something harsh still was there. I was like, Ugh. and then, and then I was like, well, I guess I'll get a little bleach and just, just a little bit. And I think that helped. And then I ate some chips and I drank a lot of water. So I think it's a little better. Yeah. Gorilla perfume. I mean, I don't know. I think the, uh, the bleach helped a little bit anyway, bad news. So I got home and I got to the Twitch stream in time. Um, but I didn't have much time to prepare anything. So really today is, it's going to be an adventure. The past streams that I've done, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for coming. The past streams that I've, you know, been doing and there's folks in the chat who are like, you know, you know, you know, you've been with me on this journey and you've seen like, you know, how things have kind of been shaken out. Usually I have something prepared to kind of start us off. And I do have that. I do have that because it doesn't take me long to grab something to prepare for you to just start us off. Cause I have so much stuff. I have so many notes. I have so many, you know, I got a lot to share. Um, but like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have much time to really think about where, you know, where we might go. So I don't know what's going to happen today. Really? got one thing for you but so if you're new here um we got to do the little got to do the intro um my name's mary you probably know that um and i really really love this live stream thing uh twitch is a live stream platform youtube you know you can live stream there you can live stream on facebook um but those are also places for videos right we love them can you hear that Eric, is that really loud and bad? <laughs> it's a helicopter. Eric, there's another climate protest. They shut down London Bridge this time. It's crazy. Uh, but I need the fresh air, you know, because I don't want to, like, die because of the perfume. Okay. Anyway, um, Twitch is a live stream platform only. Uh, it's owned by Amazon, so you needn't be scared, you know, about, like, having a Twitch account and stuff. I just say that because for so many people, um, hey, Virginia, um, Chips... <laughs> Chips solve everything. Indeed they do. Indeed they do. Thank you. It's wise. Um, you know, Twitch is for live streaming. Oh yeah, Amazon uh, owns it. And I say that because... Yeah. Yeah, it's 
new. It's it was new for me. Yeah, that's better. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know, like Twitch is sort of, you know, I don't know. It's, do I need another thing? I don't, you know. And, and then when I opened up Twitch uh, dot TV. It was all these video games. I was like, this is not my world. What is what is this? I don't, I don't, uh. But you know, live streaming is really fun. If you like what's live streaming, if you like, you know, <laughs> what's happening live, you know, then, then it is your thing, right? And so I really love researching quilts. It's just something I like to do. I like to do other things, but I really, I really love, I mean, being curious is like, I don't know, that's just kind of who I am, how I am. Um, and I really love being curious about quilts. I think they're really interesting and, and fascinating. And of course I have a family connection to them, but, and I'm really grateful that I have that, that family connection to quilts because it feels like a gift to me. There's so much to learn about the world if you use quilts as sort of the gateway um, to that. And yeah, we, I mean, I've learned about so much because I was studying quilts. Hey, Elizabeth. Oh, did you? Yeah, hey, hi. Um, yeah, it's better with the window closed, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I like I like going down the quilt rabbit hole. That's what I say. A lot of times that happens online um, because the internet is, you know, it's the greatest rabbit hole that's ever existed, right? At least so far. So we look at things. We kind of let we let things unfold. Um, and who knows where the stream will take us? Because if you if we look at something that mentions. Uh, um, quilts from Pakistan, you know, just in passing, well, maybe we'll go look at quilts from Pakistan, you know, and we'll, we'll discuss that. And, and the more people who come into the chat, um, and hang out and watch the stream, the better it's going to get because more people will have input, they'll have questions, you know, and we can just, we can just do it together, you know? Um, and that's what I love because if I, if I did it all by myself, which is what I've been doing for years, um, that's great. But when you're here, it's like way better because it's a dialogue and you know, we can all have our input and what I learn, you can learn too. Um, and I mean, I just don't want to wait to tell you all this stuff. I want to tell you now, you know, what I find. So, um, so what are we going to do? How are you doing everybody? Uh, it was Carol's birthday. Carol, let us know. How was your birthday? Was it a good one? I hope so. Carol is special to me because Carol has been with me from the beginning and I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, let us know. Did you get cake? What did you get? What kind of treats did you get? I would like to know. Um, I'll tell you first about the quilt that we have on the screen. Um, I wanted to pull up some eye candy uh, for you as we as we do the intro here. Um, this quilt I found through the International Quilt Museum's search search box, which I mean, oh yeah, I have a button now. You know, people, people, some people know that I have this amazing little button, button thing my husband gave to me. So I have, uh, I have a button that brings up the exact page. I mean, I like I programmed it to bring up the search page for the International Quilt Museum, which I think is pretty amazing. I programmed it myself. I also have a little song. Yeah, I can only play a little bit of it because um, hey, Quiltish. Hey, hi, um, you know, copyright. I don't want to. I don't want to be taken off off Twitch because I played too much Dusty Springfield. Yeah, I can turn it off too at the same time. So this quilt. Let's see. What does what does it say about this quilt? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I want to see it all. Okay, medallion quilt. Obviously. Well, maybe not obviously. Maybe you don't know that a medallion quilt is a quilt that has a center medallion, right? A central point of focus. And the medallion quilt is, um, people, people ask about like, what are the different styles of quilts? This happened, my mom and I talked about this a lot. Um, see, here we go. We're going into the, into the rabbit hole. Where, where the conversation will take us, we don't know. But this is really cool to talk about medallion quilts. Carol says she had a great birthday, no cake, swept pollen off the porch so today her allergies are acting up but I'm still fine 
and she's got sunglasses on her emoji. Yeah, makes sense. Carol, I'm glad that you had a good birthday. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Son of a Preacher Man, it's a perfect song. So, so a medallion quilt, um, yeah, mom and I were, we lectured together for some years. Um, and we did, one of the lectures that we wrote and did was, um, uh, God, what was it called? Ah, what was it called? Na uh, oh, you call that a quilt. Was that right? You call that a quilt, yeah. And what we did is we went through the four types, the four styles, the four genres of quilts, you know, in in this, in the, in America, in North America, right? Because there's, we don't know enough to talk about quilts in different parts of the world yet. Um, because it was kind of the modern quilts that made us kind of wonder about this. It was like, well, what, you know, what is a modern quilt? And of course, there's much to say about that. But we were trying to figure out what are the different kinds? What are the different kinds of the genres? And we, we identified, you know, traditional, um, studio art, um, contemporary, and modern. Sort of quilts seem to fit into those four genres. And so we identified, you know, what makes a quilt, you know, these different, these different, one of these different genres. And the medallion quilt, for example, you know, is one of those quilts that, it's one of those um, features uh, that, of course, there's other, there's other quilts that use a medallion, you know, obviously contemporary, you know, and, and modern too, to some extent, but, but the tradition you know, of, of using the center point of focus. A lot of times it's a basket, it's a star. Um, it's, gosh, I mean, we can look at medallion quilts actually after we look at this one and talk about it a little bit. Um, center point of focus framed, right? With a frame around it, um, that medallion in the middle. And, you know, this is a very traditional pattern because it happened a lot. And this uh, quilt comes from Norway or Sweden that's cool. So we do know something about, <laughs> about world quilts. We know one, you know, came from Norway or Sweden. So they have that tradition too. Um, and something becomes a tradition because somebody does it once. Um, and then someone else does it because they like it. And then they do it again and again and again. It's like the pumpkin pie, you know, at Thanksgiving, somebody makes a pumpkin pie. People are like, Hey, I, I like that pumpkin pie. I'm going to do it too. And enough people do it for long enough that it becomes traditional. And so the medallion style, that was, that's the case with the medallion quilt too. Um, and, and so, and so, and so, you know, the contemporary quilts use it too. Um, hey, Brendan, Brenda, Brenda. Hey, no, it is Brendan. It's Brendan, isn't it? It's Brendan. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm sure Eric can teach you how to program basically any, anything, Marianne. Um, yeah, panels. Yeah, Brendan, the panels that are popular now too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A panel, if you get a panel, um, to make a quilt from a panel, you add borders, right? You add frames. So, I mean, this is a medallion quilt, but it's, well, is it a frame quilt? No, no. I think a frame quilt really has, you know, more than one border seems, seems to me, but I will, we can check that too. Anyway, um, so, 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 what are we talking about here? 90 by 82, okay. Um, this is silk. Wow, it's silk. That's pretty cool. Wow, and it's embroidered. See, I thought maybe that was chintz when I was first looking at it, but it is embroidered. That's insane. That is just cray-cray. Look how beautiful this is. Wow. Let's zoom in a little bit. Mmm embroidered. Oh my god. Um, I did notice too, you never know how to finish a panel, Vijimi. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, borders, sash, well, yeah, borders and maybe you could put some patchwork at the corners, you know, make some blocks for the corners, almost like cornerstones, you know, around the panel and then put on your borders. Um, interesting. Interesting. So I think she's, uh, taken the back over to make the binding, I think, right? Which I just want to say is fabulous. I recommend it. 
I think that's what's going on here. Maybe. I don't know. This is what this is what made me wonder about it, and I, I'm not sure. But I'm just a huge fan of pulling the back over for the binding because I hate putting binding on. Hate it. I can't do it. I'm bad at it. I just I just hate it. One day I'll do the the right way, the French fold, whatever. Um, and I'll be like, oh, now I love that style. But until then, I just take the backing and I fold it over and then I turn the binding. And I love turning the binding. I just don't like measuring measuring out the binding and, and stitching it down because it never works right. And I just hate it and I get so frustrated. Um, okay, let's look at another medallion quilt because I want to, because I want to, I want to. Um, let's see, I mean, there's a lot of medallion quilts that are frame quilts too, right? I mean, this seems to be, this seems to make sense. Okay, look at these medallion quilts, wow. All of these, all of these. I'm gonna put this link in the chat. Um, hey, thank, you know, Brendan, you're right. All the cool people are following Mary on Twitch. And hey, that's, uh, that's a thing. If you click subscribe on the Twitch channel, if you're new here and you haven't done that, you'll get a notification every time I go live. And I've been going live every week, twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11 a.m. Central. We're gonna click on more of these quilts here. Um, but I'm also trying different times of the week to see you know, kind of what works. Saturday was pretty good. Saturday was a pretty good time for people, I think. Um, so that sounds good to me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. I don't, I don't do that much crazy stuff on Saturday. You know, I can, I can, I can make it work. Um, whole cloth quilts. I mean, we need to talk about whole cloth quilts. Um, what I'm going to do, what, what I've got pulled up here is a specific collection from the quilt museum, which is early. So, so, you know, they've got just a small collection. Here's how I got to it. Um, collection highlights on their main website, you know, or their main page. If you go to collections, you know, you can click on collection highlights and they'll give you, they've sort of gathered, you know, a few, you know, samples for you, right? So I was like, I'm gonna click on early pre-1800 quilts and select a beautiful quilt to put on my screen that is very, very old. Oh, I didn't see, I gotta look what year our, our beautiful Swedish or Norwegian quilt was made. 1720 to 1750. That's really, that's really old. I mean, that's really old. That's amazing. I'm sure, I'll bet, yeah, some of these are earlier. Anyway, there's so much to say about, about those early quilts. But um, I want to look at a couple more medallion quilts. And you can do that. Oh, okay, watch this, watch this. Press the button, went right to the search page. So I am going to put in, oh, I could put in medallion in the keyword, but I can also do search by pattern, pattern object name. So hmm, American Glory, Applique Grapes. This will, you know, all they're all coded, right? All the quilts in the collection. There's like 6,200 quilts in the collection. Baby Blocks. You can look at all the quilts they have with, with Baby Blocks, Basket of Roses, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, scroll down this list really fast so if you get dizzy or if you've had perfume sprayed on you and you're a little bit like Bleh. don't look okay here we go okay medallion and l m n o p m n m n o p um medallion mm -hmm. there we go there's probably a lot of them this is such a click search um such a major you know kind of quilt traditional, very traditional, all this tradition. Um, back in the day, Brendan asked, were the quilters simulating oriental rug designs? Oriental there in quotes. You know, I, I here, here's the thing, being in England, you know, it's really, I mean, all, all of our, pat, all American patchwork traditions, uh, it's been said, you know, came from England because the American, the new Americans, right, the colonists, came from here, you know, over the, went over there. Um, and, you know, they took with them the stuff that was happening here. You know, we, we, we can look at early, um, early English quilts or, or, you know, old English quilts. Let's do it. Let's go to, let's go to the V&A uh, next, okay? And look at some of the old, some of the quilts they have at the V&A that are from England, okay? Um, and, and so, you know, so I would say, 
you know, if they were making these medallion quilts, if they were making these, you know, quarter square triangle units, you know, in, in the, in early America, um, they probably learned about it and passed down that tradition because of quilts here. However, however, you know, in the British Museum, gosh, we're just all about, hey, Nori, hey, Tuesday stream, um, Egyptian, Egypt, Chian cat mummies, um, British Museum. Look at this. I want to show you this. This will blow your mind. This will blow your mind. Hello. These are cat mummies. I mean, they're animal mummies. Well, what do you, th what, well, how about that? What is that? What is that? You know what? I saw, um, Hang on, hang on, hang on. View. I'm not going to do full screen. I, Eric, when you get back, I, I have some questions for you. We have to work together on a few things. Look at this. What do you think that looks like? That third cat and the one all the way over on the right. Log cabin much? <laughs> so this is, this is, how old are these mummies? I, 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 we're going to find out. Let's see. Uh, Roman period. Roman period. So, you know, the patchwork traditions, like, where do they come from? Well, I mean, Londinium was a Roman outpost, right? But but then you see other... Oh, yeah, look, courthouse steps. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, but that technique, right? This, these, you know, um, log, logs, right? These long strips or these strips that sort of get shorter and shorter or longer and longer depending on how you look at it so that's you know that's just a really old old um, motif and old um, design you know uh, so where do our patchwork traditions come from like Brendan you were saying you know where are they with those um, medallion quilts let's look at them again you know was the inspiration from yeah like rugs or, or, or something, you know, Turkish rugs or um, rugs from, yeah, from the East, somewhere in the East with those beautiful, you know, or tapestries or woven rugs. And it's like, I think the answer could be yes and, because it seems in every culture, you know, some of these shapes, some of these designs, like these flying geese um, and the, let's see, let me see, let me see, United Kingdom. Okay, yeah, let's just look at this. 1820 to 1840. Let's see how, well, let's see, that's probably really early, yeah. Um, this is maybe early. United Kingdom. Yeah, okay, let's click on this one. So a medallion can be really, um, you know, the medallion can be huge, this huge basket, and it can also be um, just quite simple like this, right? But it's that center point of focus, that medallion in the middle. So you can see like square and a square. This is this is England, you know, 1840, or sorry, 1809 or something they said. Um, Marianne, and Marianne is our English friend. She said the Dutch East India Com Company, yes, and the British East uh, India Company, right, brought back Indian Palampur's tree of life motif, we're gonna look at it, which inspired the European market. That's what European chintz imitates. Oh, there's, I, I love this, this is so great. Ah, yes, okay, so let's look at Indian Palampors. They are very beautiful, and the tree of life, I mean, you could say this tree of life motif in the Indian Palampors, I mean, is that does that count as a medallion? It's interesting, I don't know, but it is a central point of focus. Okay, we'll take a look at those. Yeah, I mean, the British presence, Britain's presence in India, I mean, yeah, and that's a that's a grisly story. I mean, all the all the stuff in India. I mean, it's weird. But okay, so so you've got square and a square. You've got chintz. We can talk more about chintz, and you know, and just patchwork, right? Okay, and here, so do you see this this leaf? These leaves, okay. Those are fussy cut from chintz, from a larger piece of chintz fabric. They are cut out and sewn on and in fact you can see look you see this you see that little leaf it's it's this and you can even see they didn't they didn't get too crazy with their cutting you know you can see a little bit of the blue behind um and 
you know, one thing that has been said and that I've read about, oh, they also have these little flowers. I mean, they really, so, so chintz was so expensive at that time because like Marianne said, you know, it was being made in India, okay? And then, and, and chintz, by the way, is, um, there's a couple different kinds of chintz. You know, I don't know much about chintz, okay? There's an, there is a, an exhibit on chintz, Marianne, at the Fashion and Design Museum. We, we should go to it together. We should go. Um, but it's glazed, you know, and, and there's different ways to do it. You can paint, paint it on sort of a silk screen technique, kind of where you like lay on the green and then you lay on the blue. I will know more about how, to, how chintz is made when I go to that exhibit. But, you know, if they're making it in India and then they're, you know, importing it into, you know, the United Kingdom, Britain, for example, you know, that's, that's going to be expensive. And then, you know, with the American chintz quilts, then you got to get it from Britain into the States. And so chintz is not cheap, you know, you can't be chintzy, you know, you got to spend a lot of money if you want chintz. So that fussy cutting, we'll see some more of it here, right about there, that's the, whoop, that's the United States. Um, fussy cutting made a lot of sense because you could get more out of your chintz. So this is probably, I mean, just a muslin background, right? I mean, that's just, mu that's muslin. Oh, look at that quilting. Ugh, I'm dead. Um, so, so this medallion, right? Definitely medallion quilt. I mean, medallion for days. Uh, it's also a frame quilt. And you know, by the way, I want to say, I am not, I mean, I, I know a lot about quilts at this point, but I also do not know much about quilts at this point, you know? So if I say something ridiculous and completely wrong, or you're just like, I don't think that's true, please, you know, let me know because I'm talking about chins and not, and there's just experts on this stuff that <laughs> know so much more than me. And, and it's, you know, it's scary to talk about to talk about this stuff because I, c I could be wildly wrong and then I would feel so dumb. But if I get ahead of it and say, I am dumb <laughs> or I just, I, I want to know more, you know, I don't know everything. <gasps> my necklace smells like perfume. I'm going to take off my necklace. That's going to help. So anyway, so if I say something just outrageous, um, you know, be, be, be nice, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll get better. I get better. I get better all the time. So anyway, look at this fussy cutting. This is fussy cut from a larger piece of chintz and you just make it, you know, you really make it last. You get a lot of bang for your buck if you cut out these gorgeous motifs, you know? No embroidery necessary, right? Look at this border. This green grass border? I mean, really? That's so great. It's so whimsical. I mean, this is really like, hee hee, yes, mm, but this green grass is just like, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I love it so much. I love it so much. I love that it's a different green. She might have not wanted that, but that's what you get. Um, oh, look at the corners. They're different, you know? They're different. She might not wanted that either, but she got it. I love it. Um, the quilting, you know, on the screen, can you see it very well? You can. Look at the feathers. I mean, there's, a, there's like so many things about this quilt that, that kind of, you know, it's not surprising that the quilt museum wanted this one. <laughs> you know, there's a lot going on um, and it's just, it's just wonderful. So medallion quilt center point of focus. Let's just look at a couple more. Um, and that one is 1820. Yeah, 102 by 100. Nice. This one's early. Well, it's a little bit later. I just want to... Let's see what we're, we're looking at. Okay, well, we got to look at the Palampors, the Indian Palampore. We will do that next. Um, there's another. Here's one. It's pretty early. Yeah, okay. You got that chintz going on. There's, there's, I mean, patchwork, man. That is some diamond set-in patchwork. I, it's killing me. My set-ins. I'm making these. I'm making these. Oh, that's an eight-point star. I'm making six-point stars. Anyway, uh, yeah, lots of, oh, this is, and this is another, um, hang on, this is another um, design element. In a traditional quilt, you often have applique and patchwork combined. 
we, we saw a lot of that, Mom and I, when we were looking at, at different stuff. Hey, so Kate, hi. I'm so glad you could join us. Um, patchwork and applique in, in one quilt is, is a very traditional, um, they, that, that happened a lot, right? Sometimes it was an applique border, but there were both. It was combined a lot of times. Um, it's, one, it's one thing you could, you could say is a traditional sort of style, you know? Do art quilters use that? Of course. Do contemporary quilters use it? Of course. Do modern quilters use it? Interesting. I don't see a ton of applique, or I haven't in the past, in the past, what, 10 years or so? A um, little bit longer, but we'll see it. I mean, of course we'll see it. Everybody, everybody tries everything at some point. Um, but here you have a, an applique floral border or a, yeah, yeah, sort of plant nature-ish <laughs> border. And then all of this patchwork, amazing, wow. Do you think this bunting thing is, yeah, that's applique, obviously. Yeah, gorgeous. And here's some chintz. Here's some chintz. Um, and I want to, so that's, yeah, okay, 1830 to 1850. There was a whole lot of stuff going on fabric-wise in America at that time because the Industrial Revolution was um, meant that we were making fabric. We were producing our own fabric rather than having it all imported from England, you know? And so fabric was getting really cheap. Oh, this quilt is so bizarre. Oh, okay. We'll look at this. Cause you can look at all these quilts if you go to the study center, you know, we're not like spawn. We're, I'm not sponsored by the quilt museum or anything. I just love the quilt museum. And if you're looking for quilts for inspiration, if you're looking to, you know, if you want to look at more medallion quilts, I mean, you know where to go, you know? And I, I just love the IQM very, very, very much. And if you're headed, if you're headed out anywhere, swing through Lincoln, Nebraska and go to the museum. You will, will not regret it. Okay, this, this quilt is just so weird. I mean, it kind of, it kind of spooks me out. So, okay, we're gonna look at it. So mosaic, okay. It's also kind of, it's kind of a frame quilt and it's also a medallion quilt. I mean, there's a lot, a lot going on here, obviously. New Hampshire, probably, 1860 to 1880, somewhere in there. Back folded over for the binding, once again, my people, and primarily paper pieced. Oh, no, no, not you, you, oh man. I mean, it looks, it's wild. Aren't people the best? I mean, this is just the best. Hey, so hopeful. Ah, Joe Avery, yeah. Um, we'll, look, we'll, we'll look at Joe. Let's, we'll, I'm bookmarking that in my mind. So we've got, here's what's on deck, Palampur, Indian Palampur and Joe Avery, okay? That's what's on deck. See, this is this is the rabbit hole. I hope I hope I hope people are are, you know, people who haven't seen this yet, you know, are are seeing what happens, right? This is what I mean. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, early quilts. Yeah, okay, cool. Indian Palampur, you know, let's check it out. Now we're, now we'll jump in to to Joe Avery, right? We're going to look at that because because someone in the chat said, "Hey, you know, I know something uh you know, about this person and, and it, it pertains to what you're talking about. So, you know, it's, I love that, you know, I'm not alone in, in the hole. <laughs> um, so yeah, so people are so weird and I really love weird quilts. I mean, the weirder, the better usually, except this one, I don't know. It, it looks, it's, well, this, this looks spiky to me, this red patchwork here. It just looks a little severe. And then you have these like radiating, well, spikes, <laughs> you know, they just, I don't know. And then I know the binding treatment. I know, well, that, okay. That, Brendan, it, thank you for, for pointing that out, um, the binding. So, well, let's see. Okay, I mean this, but wait, this is, no, I think, you're, you're right, you're right, you're right. Th I think this back here is the background for the photograph, right? Yeah, yeah, so you're right. So so this, because I thought for a minute this was like material on the outside, but that doesn't make sense. The patchwork, I mean, those are stars along the end. Like, what? 
It's it's incredible. I don't know. I would love to see this quilt up close, you know. Um, can, do you see what we're talking about here? I mean, that just, okay, what is that? <laughs> Hold on. I mean, really, y'all. Because, because when you, when you, I think we talked about this last time, did we? Where if you're going to extend patchwork like all the way to the edge if you've got a block a repeating block and you're going to take it all the way to the edge of your quilt like do not just make yourself nuts by trying to draft like a half a block like how to make half a block to have it end up perfectly you know at, at each side Liz Porter told me just make a whole block and then cut it just cut it you know and it's kind of liberating to do that <laughs> to like sew patchwork and then like slice through it uh you know when you have to but this, this is like, um, this is different because it's, it's like the patchwork is wrapped around. I mean, but it's like, I mean, honestly, how, how I, I, oh, I want to give you a really close look up. Hang on, hang on. A really close, close up. Cause this is the higher res, I think. Do you see what I mean? It's like she's wrapped the stars around for the binding. I mean, if uh, 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 I have no clue. Usually I can kind of figure out what's going on. But what's strange is like if if she made a row of patchwork and then then wrapped it around. Okay, okay. But but the the tops of the stars are are poking out. I mean, was that set in to the white? Do you know what I'm saying? The star wraps around the back. Exactly. But I just want to know like whoop, whoop, whoop. I just want to know. I got to go back to this one. I just want to know like is is there a seam here you know what i mean because uh, i just i just feel like it just has to be that white has to like it has to be a full strip i just don't see how these floppy stars could be flopping all around she had to applicate the points thank you brendan mind meld i see you i see you exactly she just had to i would love to see this quilt and yeah i mean i Maybe they go around to the back, but not double fold. Yeah, interesting. I think, I, Brennan, I think you've got it. And so Kate says that the red um, the red points that are kind of scary do look like paper boats. Agreed. But, I mean, this is just like, there. there is no other quote like this. And also these like kind of weird, I don't, know, I don't know. But one of the things that makes it amazing, it was finished. You know, <laughs> they saw it through. They saw it through to the end. And that alone makes it magnificent. And I'm not being I'm not being snooty about that. I mean, the work that put, was put into this is just incredible. And there may have been a point where the maker was like, "Hmm, <laughs> I'm not. I, is it working? I don't know." But they said yes, and they'll finish it. Okay, cool. So now, let us see. Let's look at Palampore, okay? Just to talk, because Marianne brought it up. It's a very, very, very relevant thing. Um, let's see. Primary technique, I guess pattern object names, probably this. M N O P, okay. Yeah, Palampore, great. Yeah, Quilter 462. Hi, Quilter 462. The red ones are kind of like half stars, too. Yeah, yeah, they were. Like maybe they were cut as well. Um, agreed that quilt was revolutionary. Okay, so Palinpore. Oh, I gotta search. I gotta hit search. So this is what Marianne's talking about. So these are Indian Palinpores. That's French India. Okay, let's look at this one. Really early, and they are gorgeous. You can see this chintz thing going on. Um, this tree of life motif in, in the middle is uh, very traditional, extremely. So yeah, I mean, totally. Like the influence of the medallion quilt and the palimpore, like 
totes and the goats. And the, all of that trade going on between Britain and India, you know, all of that importing and, and I mean, yeah. Good call, Marianne. Let's look at one other one. Good call. I gotta drink my water. And I wanna show you too. Painted. This is painted. 1770. Ugh. Oh, and we have a name. I Quan or I Quane. It's it's signed. That's cool. 123 by 84 inches. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. The chat is going to go away just for a second because I want to go full screen on this. So hang on. Yeah, gosh. That is that. This looks like woven, like a woven section or something. There's something going on here. I don't know if anybody can sort of tell. It looks like embroidery, but it looks like there's like a three dimensional texture to it. I'm not sure, but wow, painted. It's painted. Mm. Totally gorgeous, totally. And it's signed. I mean, that's, that's just, that's wild. Hmm. So what you, what I have um, seen, I mean, these are still being made, right? And, you know, like the panel, right, Brendan? I mean, there's there's a, a panel vibe here. Yeah, look. Oh, that's at the Met. Here's one, here's one at the Met. Quiltish, hi quiltish, yes. That's fabulous. But I'm wanting to know, I mean, I want kind of like a, you know, a modern one, like at the Cooper Hewitt. Oh, oh, so great. <laughs> the birds and the, oh man, so cool. I just wondered if like, Christie's is selling a Palinpour. I mean, these things are like pretty fancy. Hmm. Well, I'll look. I mean, I just feel like the, um, the Palinpour is just, it shows up, right? I mean, I mean, and this, of course, this like floral chintz motif design obviously shows up in lots of places, but, um, okay. Well, here's, here's like, a, I'm sure this is a, um, oh, here's fabric. This is fabric from Anna, Anna French, Anna French. It's like naked interiors. Yeah. Okay. That's some fabric. Palinpour like fabric. Um, this looks like maybe it's like, um, yeah, it's design. It's like a, you know, home deck fabric or something. Interesting, interesting. Um, hey, Listique Design. First time being able to catch the live stream. Welcome, Listique Design. Love the India designs. Same. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Uh, if you click subscribe, you'll get a notification every time I go live. It is great that you're here. I love it. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Okay, so now we gotta go, we gotta go. We've looked at Palinpour, we've, we've done Joe Avery. So hopeful said, Joe Avery is doing some great modern patchwork applique. Okay, so now we're moving from the Palinpour and there's more to say, but that's all I kind of know about the Palinpour for now. Um, and we gotta keep this, we gotta keep going on our trek. Joe Avery, so what, um, so Hopeful was saying was that Joe Avery is doing some of that traditional style where she's using patchwork and applique elements in her quilts together. Um, and after this, I'll talk more about those four categories that mom and I were um, examining. Joe Avery, and she is here in the UK. Interesting, okay, I gotta get some water. I have some tea too, that's probably a good idea. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. She's got patchwork and applique in, in the same quilt. Okay, let's go, Let, yep, here we go. I see one, I think I see one. 
Oh no, maybe that's all piece. No, 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 no. It's it's patchwork and applique. Hang on, I'm gonna zoom zoom in. Cause like the little hearts and the little the little birdies. Totes applique. And the hand, the heart and hand. Heart and hand. Very traditional. Very traditional. Traditional motif. Okay. Um, this is really cute. Very sweet. Um, yeah. She's got her patchwork. Very, I mean, wow. Really cute. Really well done. Here, let me put, um, let me put Joe Avery in the chat. There's that. Okay. She, um, uh, Um, yeah, okay, really, really nice. So what, what do we know about Joe Avery? She's here in the UK. Um, she's really good at making quilts. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, great, great. Brendan, that's a good question for the chat. Thank you, that's what it's all about. Um, so this is a block of the month. That, that's great, that's a great block of the month. Oh, look at the chicken. Chicken, applique, applique chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so cute, cute, loving it. Okay, way to go, Joe Avery. Good job. Love these are really cute. These little um, tulips, very sweet with the little dots. I love that. Okay, so so mom and I were like, okay, there's traditional, traditional quilts, studio art quilts. I would love to look at studio art quilts like all day. We've gone over some of them. I mean, we've talked about, we've talked about them. <laughs> we will say much more about them too, but for now I'll go from, you know, traditional to, which we looked at, um, studio art quilts, okay, different. The way you can, can identify a studio art quilt, the best, the best, the simplest way to do it is that if you see a quilt um, that was made for the wall and not the bed, it may just be an art quilt. Now, mini, you know, like a, there was a, a sort of a mini uh, trend for, for a while. People still make mini quilts, but a few years ago I felt like I was seeing so many um, mini quilt projects, you know, and wall hangings and things. Are those art quilts? Like, mm, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, but you could say that they're certainly, you know, they're decorative. You know they're, and maybe they are you know artistic or whatnot. But let's let's look at a few mini quilts. Just uh, um, it was really modern mini quilts. I just saw a lot of them happening with the modern quilters. But I see mini quilt challenges at traditional quilt shows as well. Um, there were yeah. This is from Nancy Zeman. NancyZeman.com. Oh, we should talk about Nancy Zeman. We should talk about Nancy Zeman. Let's talk about it. Um, that's a pretty low resolution um, picture. This is from SoCanShe.com. Okay, yeah. Um, this is a good picture because they're not all modern style, right? So these quilts are, are mini quilts. They're for, you know, they're for decoration. They're, they're supposed to be put on the wall. But, you know, if you think about studio art quilts like um, Kate Stiasny quilts, um, she, she's got some really cool stuff. We interviewed her for the Connecticut issue of, um, Quilt Folk. Very interesting. I really liked her work. Um, oh yeah, Kate, Bisa Butler's portrait quilts. I exactly. Um, they're made for the wall, right? I mean, if Bisa Butler, you know, caught you sleeping under one of her quilts, it's like, uh, no, <laughs> absolutely not. That the work that you're seeing um, load right now is some of um, Kate's recent stuff but what I was thinking of were these you know um, graphic and you know aside from what she's doing with the appearance and with the shapes and everything um, that aside these quilts are made for the wall um, and they are quilts she calls them quilts you know but these are art quilts you could say okay and then the contemporary quilts, I think of Jenny Beyer. She is a really good example of a 
contemporary quilter. And we actually asked Jenny Beyer about her quilts and her style. Um, and she said, yes, I call myself a contemporary quilter. I'm paraphrasing. She said, because I'm using, ugh, God. I'm using traditional motifs. I'm taking traditional um, uh, cues, right? Taking cues from traditional quilts, like the medallion, okay? I can tell you a story about this quilt that will, will blow your mind. Um, she said, but I'm using updated fabrics and updated techniques or new techniques to make my quilts. And so that sort of makes, you know, that's how mom and I were, you know, identifying a contemporary quilt. A contemporary quilt has many of the traditional pieces of it, you know, many of the traditional, traditional um, sort of hallmarks. Um, of the traditional quilts, the early quilts, um, but rotary cutters are being used for them, new fabrics are being used uh, to make them, and so it's sort of an, an updated traditional quilt, if you will. But if you are a quilter who makes a medallion quilt with chintz, you know, you're making a traditional style quilt um, windows, and that's, and that's awesome, you know. But if you're like Jenny Beyer, um, you know, they're traditional, but with her twist on them, you know? So here, I just want to get a really good image of this. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, oh, wow, so hopeful. Oh, I got to catch up on the chat. Oh, I just love it. Uh oh, you lost the feed. Oh, no. Uh oh, can you, I hope you're back. I hope you're back. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, are you there? Give give a give a sign that you're there. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're okay. Hopefully we're okay. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that everything's okay. Um, okay, okay, good. Whew. If something goes wrong, I mean. I, I'm really scared because I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I'm glad you're back. Okay. Whew. So, um, yes. And I'm, I've got to catch up. Yeah. The, Nori, they're just amazing. Bisa Butler. Okay. Yes. Mini quilts are a channel. I've never made a mini quilt because I just, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. Um, there are so many great mini quilts and traditional ones, contemporary ones, modern ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jenny Beyer hand piece. You know, here, let me tell you about Jenny Beyer. And I saw Jean Ray Laurie. I mean, we could do we could do a week on Jean Ray Laurie, but yes. Um, okay, good. So Jenny Beyer is ambidextrous. Did you know that? She hand pieces, I think. I mean, does she hand piece everything? I can't say that. I don't know that that's true. But she hand pieces a lot of her work. And she's just, she's a monster. She's amazing. She's, I mean, she's like, She's extraordinary, and I feel like I just said this, but Jenny Beyer was the first, I think I did say this a couple streams ago, Jenny Beyer, um, as far as I know, was the first quilt, like, personality to do her own fabric line she, with RJR. And I've, I've looked through old uh, issues of Quilter's Newsletter, and um, it's awesome to see all of, all of the women that you know and love, and, and, you know, a few guys too, you know, like, in their 30s, you know, Jenny Byers, like, you know, with her fabric line. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get that. Uh, I don't know if I, yeah, I might be able to open that up from, from my file. So, um, so yeah, so she did a, a fabric line, you know, quilters cotton, uh, because she wanted, she needed the stuff that she needed to make her brilliant quilts. So ambidextrous. Okay, great, great, Jenny, great. This quilt, is called Windows, and I will tell you about it. Goodbye, cats. You must go. Okay. Um, it was made in, I think it was finished in 2002. Um, Jenny and her husband, and she tells this story about this quilt, of course. Um, hey, just so viv. Okay, good. Um, Jenny and her husband were, they had planned a trip to Italy to go look at um, 
mosaic floors and thing, mosaic tile. And um, because she wanted to study that, you know, for her quilts, she was doing doing some research. And they were supposed to leave, you know, on September 11th or, you know, right after. Okay, 2001, 2001, obviously, 2001, uh, September 11th. And so they did not take their trip, obviously. And Jenny had a friend at the Pentagon who died. So, so, so she made this quilt. Why do we cry on these streams every time, you know? Well, because quilts are emotional. How about that? I have no shame. Um, there's a piece in this quilt I don't know if it's in the center medallion, medallion, or if it's all, all total, I'm not sure if it's, you know, but for everyone who died that day, uh, on that horrible day. And so um, it's all hand pieced, yes. And in the center, you can't see it here, and, and there's just no, no picture that I have that would, would show it to us in high resolution. But there's a, a Lady Liberty um, I'm just sure that's that's true. Isn't that true, Mary? I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, a Lady Liberty um, image of her holding up a torch. Whew. So pretty extraordinary. And this would be a contemporary quilt. It's got elements of traditional quilts, mosaic. Um, sorry medallion frames totally frames you know um it looks like a chintz on that on that outer you know border i don't know that it would be classified as such but it's a very traditional looking fabric right um and you know patchwork elements that are just as old as it gets i mean as as traditional as it gets square in a square diamond in a square uh, sawtooth border. I mean, this is what it's, this is what we, this is what we do, right? Look, look at this. Lady Liberty is in each of the north, south, east, west points. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Right, right, right. Oh, I haven't looked at this quilt in a long time. Yeah. American flag, Lady Liberty, American flag. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you. You're right. Um, this, I mean, this, this, piecing just kills me. I mean, look at this. I mean, the talent and the experience that it takes to make something like this, to successfully make something like this, it's really, it's really, I mean, there's just like nobody better than her, I think. Liz Porter's really good at making quilts. I mean, of course, there's many brilliant quilt makers, but I don't know. I mean, Jenny Byer is just She's just kind of in a class by herself, don't you think? Um, yeah, contemporary quilts. So, traditional. And Mom and Liz, very traditional quilters. And the International Quilt Museum keeps, keeps coming up. Um, Liz Porter quilts. Um, they're doing a Marianne Fons and Liz Porter um, exhibit at the Quilt Museum. You know, this is a quilt of, of Liz's. Oh, I can't use that one. It's so, so bad. I mean, yeah, okay. But this one, this one is really good. What is it? Uh, well, okay, it's Brackman. We'll, we'll give it to her. So this quilt of, of Liz Porter's on the right, applique and patchwork. She combines it. There, It's not in crazy colors, you know? She's not doing it in, you know, oh, I don't know, in modern style fabrics, right? So it's not contemporary. Liz is a pretty traditional quilter. She takes those elements from the past, those traditions, and she makes her quilts, you know, in that style. You know, she doesn't get too cray cray, right? I've said this before, Katie Porter's Liz's daughter, the the um, Congresswoman. Um, there she is, there she is. Uh, yeah, Liz, Liz is, is doing uh, traditional quilts. Okay, so traditional, studio art, contemporary, and then modern, you know? Modern style quilts, which we, which we know and love. Um, 
and we all we all kind of know about modern style quilts but have you looked at this quilt lately um what's her name cat have you looked at this quilt lately <laughs> cat jones have you ever seen this quilt do you know about this quilt hang on hang on i want to get the biggest image i can hang on hang on hold your hold your hold your cats yeah okay while she naps this is um abby glassenberg's blog no that's not it it's not gonna work okay this is good <laughs> i wish i could like hide the screen um until i pull it up so you all just get wowed by this yeah so this is bling by cat jones it won best of show obviously at quilt con in 2017 yes brendan says impressive to see this in real life indeed um it's enormous first of all it's like 100 by 100 or you know it's huge it's like 10 feet by 10 feet something like that and you, really isn't that weird when you see something and then you you see something for the first time and then you see it again immediately or like you you learn a word this happens a lot you learn a word for the first time and then like two people you use, use it or you see it again it's crazy um a princess cut diamond oh nori oh yes okay i gotta read nori's comment love to listen to you while i sew loving these streams Yes, I'm so happy. Like, talk about crying. I'm so happy because I really like it. And I just, I don't know. <laughs> Marianne, you were so funny two days ago on Sunday. I was like, I think I'm going to stream again tomorrow. I will never forget it. You said, pace yourself, Mary. And I thought about it and I didn't stream yesterday because you're right. I got to pace myself. I can't get too cray cray, but it's just like all I want to do all the time. But I am pacing myself. It's a good, it's good advice. So I'm just thrilled, thrilled that you are sewing and listening. It's what it's all about, you know? And again, I say, tell your friends, tell people, because I don't know that Instagram really throws me into the algorithm as much as it normally does when I talk about going on Twitch, because it doesn't want you to watch Twitch. It wants you to watch Instagram. So tell your friends, let them know like, hey, this is really fun. And because that community is what I want to build. Um, oh, MJ Kinman look at her too in fact in fact mj kinman is who we will look at next because she does quilts that i never thought about her in conjunction to cat jones but it's a perfect next next step here today so this a princess cut diamond was the inspiration for cat's um quilt bling paper pieced um i mean when i when i'm talking to people about quilts when I'm talking to non quilt people about quilts and they just don't, they just don't understand. And you know, which is fine. They don't understand like that there's this world and that we're these people and <laughs> we may, we have all of, you know, we have four genres of quilts and all kinds of variety within those genres. And I just want them to understand, you know, or I'm telling them about modern quilts and I, I need them to understand. This is what I pull up. I pull up bling pretty much every time. Um, because it's just, it like defies gravity or something. It's it's just really, really special. 10 feet by 10 feet, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, and MJ Kinman, and I know where we're gonna go after N MJ Kinman. Um, we're gonna go back to 2017, um, to, the, to QuiltCon, and we're gonna look at the winners, the QuiltCon winners in 2017 in Savannah. And the reason I want to is twofold. One is because, you know, this quilt made me think of 2017, uh, Savannah QuiltCon, because it won. And my friend Heather's heard me say this a zillion times, and she's, you know, it's not, it, she's, she couldn't make it. Like the only year she's not been at QuiltCon was 2017. And I'm always on about how 2017 was the year that like the modern quilt, like, <laughs> proved itself like to the world like it doesn't have anything to prove anymore ever because I felt that the Savannah show was so good and 
it was just out of this world good that it was like the moderns have arrived. And of course, they were doing amazing stuff before, but there was something about that show, something about the quilts that year that I was like, cool. Like, I don't know. So we're going to look at those. But first, let's go MJ Kinman um, quilts. Because she, aha, oh, wow, okay. That's a diamond quilt. That is also a diamond quilt. I did not know that that quilt existed. There's similarities for sure, absolutely. No, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, let's go to MJ's website. Actually, you know what? Let's listen to her talk about her quilts because I think that is really cool. And I can look for something while we've got this. Hi, on. everybody. MJ Kinman here, and welcome to my studio. I'm delighted to announce that I've been invited to teach a two day workshop at eQuilter.com. Hang on, sorry. I just got to pull, I got to do this. I got to get a browser down here. Okay in Boulder, Colorado. On Saturday and Sunday, October 6th and 7th, later this year, I'll be teaching my treasure hunting class. Sold. <laughs> the treasure hunting class that I'll be teaching is a combination of a design class and my bite-sized gem class. First day of the class is all about looking at our inspiration, the things that, that inspire us, and translating that into a freezer paper chart that then can be turned into a two-dimensional quilt. The second day is all about the technique and how to make that happen. Here's an example of one of the samples that we do in my bite sized gem classes. Uh, this is just a small interior of a diamond that I love, and um, I use that as some of my examples for folks. Here's another one. This actually happens to be an interior of one of my very first diamond quilts. This also has an example of some of the wild motion machine quilting that I have developed, kind of uh, random, non-directional uh, quilting techniques that allow the viewer to look through the quilting and to the quilt itself to see the flow of light and color over the surface of the quilt and instead of the quilting elements itself. Hmm. So I look forward to meeting you in class and hearing a little bit about what you're working on and perhaps share a few um, ideas and techniques that I think you'll find valuable as a very powerful tool to put in your own quilting toolbox. Hmm. She's so nice. One of the things I wanted to do was pull up a, um, pull up a, e e I wanted to look at her picture. Yeah. Okay. Um, the article that we did on her, um, for Quilt Folk because it's really good. And we have some really lovely pictures of her quilts. Okay, so I'm pulling up her website and I'm gonna go here. Okay, 88. Okay, that is doing that because of that. It's a little slow, but it's gonna be okay. Hey, Lestique Design. You started today binding one of the first quilts, hand English paper piece, started back in 2012. You're working on a UFO, an unfinished object, and you're gonna get it done. I love that, you know? Finishing a project, I've got two. Oh, I'm almost done. Now you're working on spreadsheets, okay, that's good. You, 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 you had your fun, and now you're doing the uck stuff, and then you can go back to your fun, you know? So the MJ Kinman, yeah, okay, this is amazing. This is great stuff, look at this. Wow, wow, bourbon diamond. So she lives in Kentucky. And she is um, delightful, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The quilt folk stuff is not loading very well. So okay, so we're gonna leave we're gonna leave that alone because Dropbox is terrible. I just I just hate I don't want you to be waiting waiting on dumb Dropbox. I mean look at these. These are amazing. They're just, um, look at that, amazing. Thirdstoryworkshop.com, that's right, has gemology. More paper piece gems. Has gemology, more paper piece gems. That is so cool, okay, yeah. Thirdstoryworkshop.com, third story awesome. Um, bourbon fire quilt, yeah, I think bourbon fire quilt, like Brendan, that's what we took a picture of in Quilt Folk, but Dropbox is so damn slow, I just, I just don't want to, I don't want to keep you guys waiting. Okay. Um, let's see. There's this one. The bourbon drop quilt is really cool. And, and it hangs in, um, the Maker's Mark, is that right? Maker's Mark Distillery. 
we took pictures of it of it there okay I mean you know I could probably just you, could, you know make you wait right but I don't know. Um, but I, I did I, I tempted you with the quilt con winners from 2017 and I want I want to show you those so I'm gonna keep things moving along here um, quilt con whoop quilt con winners sorry 2017 okay and this like I said this was the year when I when bling won best of show and I just felt like the modern quilters had arrived and and I remember um, the other reason I wanted to go to some modern quilts now is because I was talking about the four genres um, this four sort of classes of, of quilts traditional studio art contemporary and modern and we looked at different examples we looked at the old the old stuff um, the traditional quilts uh, from England and from early United States then we looked at Palampur, Indian Palampurs. Um, we looked at one studio art quilt example. I There's so much I wanna learn and study about studio art quilts. I'm leaving it alone right now because you're just gonna get a lot of that in the coming months. You just are because there's just so much to look at. I'm so crazy about that time period. I never was before, but now I'm really into it. And we looked at Jenny Beyer, right? Contemporary quilts. And there's so many more of those that we should look at and that we will look at. But we haven't actually examined that fourth genre. So let's do it. And what better way to do it than to go through the best of show in quilt harm? Okay. I mean, the quilt on the left is one of my favorite quilts I've ever seen. <laughs> I just, I just love it. I just love it. So go north, sorry, um, these, these images are pretty big, so I'm not gonna do the whole, you know, open image and new tab deal. Um, go north, Maritza Soto, 69 by 70. I mean, it's just, it's just fabulous. The quilting, look at the quilting. And this one, what did it say, right? Excellence in quilting, yeah. Gee, I wonder why. Oh, these, the resolution on these is so great. Oh, I'm so happy, yay. Look at this. Whoa, that's a great image. That's like the coolest thing to have on the screen ever. That could be a really good desktop, desktop image. Um, I'm gonna put this link in the chat because that's what we do. Great. Um, yeah, so just her grasp of color her just understanding of <laughs> geometry and like, oh, I don't know, piecing, quilt making. It, it's, it's so simple, but it's so effective. Um, and of course it's just ex expertly done, expertly done. And maybe you don't respond to it as much as I do and that's totally okay. But to me, you know, when I saw this, I was like, oh, well, <laughs> cool. Um, People's Choice, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, you know, another thing. I need I need an assistant. Who wants to help me? I've got Jean Ray Laurie that we have to look at. I'm gonna say portrait quilts we should look at at some point. Um, I need, yeah, I gotta have, I gotta have my list. I mean, there's so much to look at. There's so much to talk about. That's why quilts are so interesting to me. It's not just because my mom did it. It's because I happen to have, you know, quilts like in my life because of, you know, being born into the Fonz family. And, you know, it's like the coolest topic ever, but I, it's just an accident, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask for this, but it's like the coolest thing ever. Um, hey, the quilt matches the colors on my logo Twitch page. You're right, like the purple or like the, the red, the red, yeah, I, yeah, it's good, it's good, Brendan, it's good. Um, so yeah, portrait quilts are interesting and, and, and there are, there are many of them. Are there many of them at in the modern world? I think of Marissa Avarinos. We got to look at her portrait quilts. Bisa Butler, obviously, you know, um, faces, you know, and by portrait, I mean, you know, faces, right? It doesn't have to be someone posing, just the, the faces quilt. Um, lots of art quilts do the face stuff, you know, we'll look at those. We'll, it's really interesting. And you know, the question that you might be, you know, posing in your mind, you know, is this an art quilt? 
you know, or is it a modern quilt? And and it's, I mean, it's it's a fair question to ask of any of these quilts. Like, does this count as this kind or this kind? Is it traditional or contemporary? Anything is possible. You know, these are really rough categories. But just to kind of, and, and why learn them? Like, why think about them? I don't know. Maybe maybe the point of, of doing that is maybe just to, when you look at a quilt, you can kind of, like, analyze it a little bit more with like just a little bit more of a perspective on the different kinds of quilts. And so that's just kind of fun. Like, oh, they have traditional elements here, you know, but also um, it might inspire, it might inspire you to say like, oh, I've been making contemporary quilts, like, cool. I'm gonna push it more in a traditional direction now, or I'm gonna push it more in this other direction. It's just food for thought, you know? Um, so like, is this quilt made for the bed? I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think it looks pretty good on the wall. Tim Natar. Yes, I should have said her, her name. Or wait, no, not Tim Natar. This is Kim Soper. Tim Natar does um, portrait quilts, right? Right? I, I'm not going to jump over and, and Google her yet because I do that a lot. So I'm going to stay on this. But then, yes. Um, Latina quilters. Kim so Is Kim Soper Latina? I don't know. I didn't know that. I don't know. So, so put it in the chat because that's great. Um, so, you know, is, is a modern quilt like this an art quilt? I mean, arguably, yeah. And what's interesting is I, I see more and more modern quilters, modern style quilts, especially at QuiltCon, really drifting. I don't know if that's the right, um, cool. Um, if that's the right way to put it. But a lot of the quilts in, in the shows you know they're they're really looking like art quilts to to me, but what does that even you know like I, I don't know I don't know. Um, they're also show quilts. That's something important to remember. You know the quilts that win these awards. I mean they're they're show quilts. There are quilts at Paducah, contemporary quilts. You know traditional elements with updated fabrics, Swarovski crystals on them. You know long arm quilted, so using you know new tools to do, you know, traditional style, you know, motifs, feather, feather quilting that was done on a, a gamel, you know, um, you know, so, so there's, there's quilts at shows that aren't meant for beds, but they're still, you know, they're still quilts, not art quilts, whatever. So, so who knows, you know, but there's a lot of quilts like Sherry Lynn Wood, amazing. Um, oh, whoops, I misspoke. I did not mean Sherry Lynn Wood. I meant... <laughs> Brittany Bowen Burton and Natalia Bonner. Um, I said that because, you know what, I, I know why I said that. Because I was thinking about Sherry Lynn Wood and I was thinking about that a curve and then I saw a curve and I was like, it's Sherry Lynn Wood. Apologies, apologies, very different. Um, gorgeous, like, you know, we saw Kate Stiasny earlier, you know, some sort of elements of, of art quilts. Okay, right there on the screen, Mare. Way to go. Okay, and Nori says Soto is a Latina quilter. Great. Um, not easy being green. I just thought the quilts this year were so great. Um, Judge's Choice. Christy Dom, this quilt is so cool. Waiting for Sanity. And she said, uh, well, now this says Christy Shields. That's interesting. What's up with names today? What's up with names? What's the deal? Um, she said that this quilt she made during the 2016 election season. And so it's like red and blue and, you know, waiting for sanity is like, <sighs> make it stop. You know, she was saying like, oh, the election was just so nuts. And so she made this quilt, you know, waiting for sanity. And it's, it's so good. It's so simple. I just want to, I want to look at it. Hold on. I think it's Christy Dom. Christy Dom waiting or sand oh, it's terrible um, the colors are brighter than what we're seeing on the on the website there for the modern quilt so you can see it's it's a, it's a little brighter than the the picture we have on the quilt con page but it's just quarter square triangles I mean that's that's all it is you know um, Lou Kane's for portraits yes 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 um, it, it's 
you know, it's simple, but look how she's cut, like right here, you know, she's cut the side off, you know, so they're not all perfect, if you will, perfect quarter square triangles. And here, something interesting is happening here, you know, it's sort of, you know, being mushed together or something very subtle but very very cool and it gets it gets smaller and smaller then it gets bigger it's just great I just think it's really really great and the colors I mean how many colors are there six there's a few different grays maybe you know maybe there's eight maybe there's maybe but there's not more than ten you know it's so Viv no problem you got to go make dinner you can watch it on the replay I'm so glad you came by thank you for coming by um, here's a, a political kind of quilt. We'll definitely talk about political quilts at some point. Um, just amazing. Erica Bonkowski, in incredible quilting there. Um, and the things I have to say about political quilts is not what you think. Um, it's not what you think. I, I don't have, I have an opinion about political quilts that might surprise you. So one day when I do political quilts, or when I, there'll probably be lots of times it comes up because I plan on doing this Twitch thing for a long time, so we're probably going to talk about things more than once. But um, yeah, the political quilt discussion is fascinating. Warp and Weft. I mean, what a cool quilt. It's so great. Cheryl Bricky, 43 by 41. Small-ish, right? Not mini, I would say, but pretty, uh, pretty small. Definitely meant for the wall. Hashtag quilt, you know totally um, relevant, totally current. Mustard stain. Oh, Paige Alexander, delightful woman. She was featured in the South Carolina issue of Quilt Folk. I saw that quilt in person. It's amazing. Oh yeah, here's applique. The modern quilters have been appliqueing forever. What was I thinking? Oh man, look at this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you see what I mean by the quilts that year? I mean, I just think they they just knocked me out look at this look at this it looks like a um what am i thinking of like like the 60s art like like bewitch like like you know it's that like uh mid-century modern sort of art direction thing like the the man with the golden arm you know like the art the posters for movies and things it's just got that whimsical dick van dyke kind of thing you know op art yeah yeah it, it's just great. It's just great. I love it. So this is this one in the applique, in the applique um, category. Um, tea and Skittles, Thomas Nower, right? And this is a, you know, political quilt, you could say. It's, you know, referencing a cultural event. Um, and this one, I mean, <sighs> Blabarella, Hillary Goodwin, quilted by Krista Withers. It's just awesome. Oh, I gotta eat a chip. Maybe that'll help my throat. Mm. It was like every quilt was better than the last one that year. I felt like. Look at the quilting. I can't go in any further, I don't think. Yeah. Look at those circles. I mean, the, the talent that is working in the modern quilt world, it's crazy. And if you think about it, like, the modern quilters, I mean, the modern style really started gaining grab, gaining steam. You know, the Modern Quilt Guild in LA, I believe it was either 2008. It was, I think it was like 2008 or nine in LA. Elisa Haight Carlton, Heather Grant, and Latifa Safir, you know, they were making a baby quilt for their friend, I believe. I don't know. I think there was a baby quilt involved somehow. But anyway, they, they started making quilts. And and that's how the Modern Quilt Guild, that's where it started and kind of how it started. These are group, group or B quilts. Um, and it just grew and grew. And so as it grew, like, you know, in 2017, it's not quite 10 years, 10 years later in 2017. I'm not good at math. Of course, the modern quilts are getting more complicated and the quilters who are working in that style are getting better and better and better. I mean, you know, years had passed since like the Modern Quilt Guild had guilds all over and, you know, so the people who have been making quilts in the modern style, like from the beginning, just think about it by 2017, pff, 
you know, the ones who really stuck with it are like killing it. These are group quilts. <laughs> There's always a baby quilt. It's true, Elizabeth, totally. Okay, bye a bit, Palumbo. And uh, you know, yeah, we've been on an hour and a half. I don't know, I just wanna keep going. But after we look at these quilt con quilts, I'll probably start to wind it down because people have other things to do. I don't really have anything else to do, but I probably should. No, I got email, I gotta do emails. Um, this quilt, again, one of my favorites. Um, these gals from, I don't know, they're from, they're all Seattle. Yeah, Seattle Modern Quilt Guild. I love it, I think it's so great. Yeah, and talk about like 1960s, you know, that, that style is just like, yeah, mid-century mod, organic mid-century mod is the name of that from Central Jersey Modern Quilt Guild. Okay, let's see what else we got. I just, yeah, I don't know, that year. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm, mm, mm. Handwork, okay, right. This is all hand quilted. I mean, wow, wow. Now, big stitch quilting, I think you could call it that. Is it Sashiko, though? I mean, Heather, my friend Heather mentioned something the other day. You know, it's not Sashiko, it's big stitch. So that's something to look at. I mean, I, I need to understand what counts as what. Okay, and here we go, improvisation. Wow, so that, so Lincoln won a couple times. Scattered, fabulous. Michael Miller, so they used Michael Miller fabrics. That was the stipulation, that was the rule. They had to use Michael Miller fabrics. Amazing, look at that. <laughs> look deep, deep into my eyes. This is very simple. I mean, I mean, you know, design-wise, it's, you know, fabulous and gorgeous and brilliant and intelligent, right? But, but piecing-wise, it's half square triangles. It's triangles, you know, like I actually, <laughs> Don't quote me and don't make me do it. But I mean, I could probably put this together, you know, with that. I mean, I, you know, if somebody helped me with, <laughs> with the math and the dimensions and stuff, I could definitely put this together. Like I would need a pattern simply because I, I can't draft a, a, from looking at a quilt, I can't draft a pattern to save my life. I mean, I would really be in trouble. If my life was on the line and I had to draft a, a quilt pattern from sight, you, it would be it would it would be um, be a nail biter, um, but once I had those dimensions, I mean this quilt is is quite simple to piece, right? It's half square triangles, you know. You sew your your blue triangles and your white. Let's see, these, you know, cut your pieces. Make sure you're cutting straight a grain, you know. There, piece these two together. I mean this is a block, right? This is the block, and so you make your half square triangles, and you're you gotta. Be careful with with this, but you could do a strip. I mean, that, that's a strip set, you know? You could do it like that. You could do it like that. I'd pro, or no, row, do it like this. Make your rows like this, half square triangles like that. Anyway, you know, this is the block. And it's got a slight color variation here. You know, she's turned the white. This is another block. I mean, it's brilliant, right? It's brilliantly put together, but it is simple in terms of the elements that she's using. Um, yeah, and she's using traditional patchwork elements, okay, with updated fabrics. So is it a contemporary quilt or is it a modern quilt? I don't know. I don't know. Depends on what show she, <laughs> she enters it, you know, in, okay? That's, that's fair. Minimalist design, great. I used this quilt in a lecture that I gave, uh, not that year, but another year. Just a few more. I mean, look, you see what I'm saying? There was something, there was something about Savannah. Something about Savannah. Hey, Mostly Quilts. Big, so Mostly Quilts says, I think big stitch is like utility quilting, right? Very good point. And she says she just bought the book Big Stitch Quilting by Carolyn Forrester. It's good so far. That's good. Let's look at it. Because I really should know that, you know? I mean, Sashiko is a Japanese technique, which is, you know, the the thread is thicker and the needle is bigger and the stitches are are bigger and more visible than typical hand quilting you know normal hand quilting but you know it it seems to me it makes it makes sense that the, you know not all like 
all sashiko is big stitch quilting maybe but not all big stitch quilting is sashiko it may be something like that you know um big stitch quilting goes faster listique says interesting we will we will know i mean look look at this fireworks Jeannie jenkins from canada toronto modern quilt guild are you kidding me i mean just the color play you know the color play and the the quilting i mean how did they i mean it, it's funny bling bling is so good that i mean it they were lucky the judges were really lucky that bling was in this year's show because it just it's such a showstopper it was like oh thank god yeah we know what the best in show is you know because if it hadn't been there i mean what would they what would they choose this is nice <clears throat> this muted muted color palette and then there's like the piecing category like we haven't seen the quilts in the piecing category yet okay mm. Mm. Marilyn Farquhar Grand River Canadian you Canadians you Canadian didn't a Canadian win this year too I think she's Canadian isn't she I gotta look at it. I gotta look at that. No, 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 no. It's a cliffhanger. Gotta come back. Either the next stream or a stream in the future. <coughs> we'll look at we'll look at more winners and people. Let that is yeah that one first place for piecing. First place Ode de Yoshiko. Amazing, incredible, incredible, incredible. And then small quilts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Paige Alexander, Cursive is a Fading Art. So great, right? So clever. She also had that other quilt. I talked about um, Paige from South Carolina and Quilt Folk. So she had a good year that year. And this is just, I mean, <laughs> she calls it whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever, you're amazing, Katie. <laughs> Look at that, I mean, pff, the bias binding, the curves, unbelievable. Mm, dark geometry just great okay and the last category here yeah, yeah quiltish Canadians have won for a number of years correct I mean it's and it's blind judging I mean you don't have the name when you're judging quilt con you don't have the person's name or where they're from it's just the quilt the jury uh, the jury thing oh yeah and this look at this okay wait which category is this use of negative space so this quilt if i am not mistaken i mean that's thread right yeah that's the quilting that makes the color that's not fabric it's not piecing it's quilting now the now this this is patchwork but the colors behind and woven through it's thread so great Peter Byrne. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Byrne. Quiltish, do you... Who's Peter Byrne? Oh, and I miss Marianne. Big Stitch, in my experience, says Marianne, is done with embroidery needles and eight, uh, number eight, pearl cotton. Stitch to be seen. Yeah. As we can't all do it like proper Amish women with their ten stitches to the inch. <sighs> I've been working on my hand quilting. I mean, those tiny, tiny needles, the betweens. I mean, my big hands, they, I don't even, I can't even hold that needle, you know, trying to, and then get, trying to get through layers of, I don't know, it's really hard. Mostly Quilts has a question for the chat. She got a question for the chat. I love this, yes. Okay, oh yeah, the youth is always the last, the last um, category. I mean, youth, <laughs> I'm telling you, 2017, it was just a showstopper. And there we've got some gemstones, taking it full circle, bringing it full circle. Um, good stuff. Okay, don't get dizzy. I'm going to speed up to the top. Hang on, hang on. All right. So today, what did we do? Today, I was talking so much, having so much fun. 
I barely had any chips. I do feel better. The perfume has, I think it's gone away. Um, we, we didn't know where we were going to go today, but where we went was old school, really early quilts, um, from the International Quilt Museum and a few others. Um, we talked about Indian Palampur and chintz. We talked about chintz. Um, there was this sort of macro discussion or macro, you know, exploration of these four genres, traditional, studio art, contemporary and modern. It's just food for thought. Like I said, you know, Marianne, Fonz and I kind of worked that out. We, it's up for revision. We might be, we might be wrong, but Jenny Beyer and Liz Porter, they weighed in on that. So that's good. Um, and well, I mean, we looked at quilts in every category. Um, yeah, there's more to say about everything always. Um, we talked about quilt con 2017 being kind of a banner year for the quilt con folks. And, you know, I had a blast. It's 6.40. Um, I should, I should, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to go because Marianne told me last time to pace myself. So I'm going to pace myself. Um, yeah. Was, am I forgetting anything? I felt like there was one other thing we were going to look at, but you'll have to come back next time when we hang out again. I'm so glad that you came. If you're new, come back come back. Um, there's all, it's always going to be different. Maybe we'll, you know, talk about contemporary quilts again, but not in the same way. And there's so many quilters to look at so many people to, to investigate and things that we had no, I mean, I find things all the time while I'm streaming with you that I had no idea about. So that's how it works. Um, tell your friends, come back the next time I'm streaming, unless I do one tomorrow night because I want to check these different times. It's possible, it's possible I'll stream tomorrow, Wednesday, later in the evening for me to see if that's a good time for folks, but I'll for sure be streaming at this time on Thursday. So 11 a.m. Central Time on Thursday, for sure. Uh, you're just the best. Uh, the chat stays up for a little, a little bit, and thanks Quiltish, and so I'll leave that um, leave that going. I think mostly quilts, you've got some answers to your question, which is awesome. So glad. And Lestique, Quilter 462, they're, they're throwing that in. I just love that. That's what it's about. So, okay. I'll see you later. Bye everybody. Take care. Do your, do your stuff and looking for the button that says the thing. Okay. Okay. Bye.